In this lesson, we'll learn about the cutting conditions. Cutting conditions are like cutting presets that can be used to set the plotter to the perfect condition for cutting specific types of material. For instance, condition 1 may be set up for cutting high-performance vinyl with normal cut settings. Condition 2 may be set up for cutting reflective vinyl, which may need a higher force. Condition 3 may be set up to cut rhinestone pattern material that may need a slower speed, and so forth. The settings within a cutting condition include the force, speed, acceleration, the type of blade that's to be used, and other settings. The CE6000 has a total of 8 cutting conditions when the plotter is in normal menu mode, and 5 cutting conditions when the plotter is in the simple menu mode. The normal menu mode allows us to change all the settings for a condition, whereas the simple menu mode allows for adjusting the speed and force. In this lesson though, we'll be covering how to adjust cutting conditions while in the normal menu mode, since the steps are similar in nature to the simple mode. First we'll cover how to easily adjust the current condition, then we'll cover how to easily switch between conditions, and finally we'll show how each condition can be configured to cut the different types of media you may be using. Let's set up this current condition to cut through high performance vinyl. To accomplish this, press the condition test key. This will switch to this screen that shows the current condition number and the settings for that condition. These settings include tool, speed, force, acceleration, and other more advanced settings. The first setting displays the current cutting condition number. We'll discuss switching conditions later in this lesson, but choosing this option will enable us to switch between conditions. The second option shows the tool or blade type to be used for that condition. To change the blade type, first determine which blade tool is being used. The easiest way to do this is to look at the container that your blade came in. This will indicate the blade type number that can be used for the condition. The screen shows us that we need to press the 2 key to change the blade type. This menu shown here is typical of how the other condition settings are adjusted. For instance, to change the blade type, simply press the up arrow or down arrow key to select the blade type. In this case, we will be using the CB09U blade. Once the blade type is located, press enter, which basically accepts the new blade type, or press the left arrow key to cancel out of this menu option altogether. When the left arrow key is chosen, this will discard any changes made and will return back to the previous menu. In this case, we want to accept the new blade type, so we can press enter. This will return us to the previous condition menu. To set the speed, press the 3 key. In this menu, notice at the top there are two rows of values. The top row lists the condition number. The bottom row is the speed value for each condition. Notice that the current condition, condition 1, is highlighted and ready to be adjusted. All that we have to do now is press the up or down arrow key to change the speed value for this condition. In this case, let's raise the speed to about 45 since we'll be cutting vinyl, which allows us to have a higher speed. As with changing the blade type, pressing the enter key will accept the new value. Once again, this returns to the condition menu. Next, we want to change the force. To do this, just press the 4 key. Here we have the same type of menu that we had for the speed setting. We have the top row listing the condition numbers and the bottom row, which shows us what force is assigned to each condition. Once again, condition 1 is highlighted, so we can press the up arrow keys to increase the value to 15 and then press enter to accept the values. The upper right hand corner of the condition menu indicates there are three pages of settings for this particular condition and that we are on the first page. These other settings are more advanced and will be covered in a later part of this lesson. Now that we've got the condition the way we want, we need to perform a test cut on the material that this condition has been set up for. 
At the bottom right of the screen, there are two arrows, and next to them are little patterns representing a square with a triangle within them. This indicates that by pressing the left arrow key, the cutter will cut a single square and triangle pattern. And pressing the right arrow key, the cutter will cut three square and triangle patterns at different force levels. Let's first cut a single square and triangle pattern by pressing the left arrow key. It will show this message, allowing us to use the arrow keys to move the tool head to the location where we want the test cut to be. In this case, we can just press enter and the cutter will cut the test pattern. When checking the test cut pattern, we will first see if the material has been cut cleanly. To do this, remove the outside square. It should come up easily without pulling up the triangle. There will be times though, as you see here, that the triangle will tend to lift. Don't be confused thinking that the force is too low. This could be the nature of the vinyl. What we are really looking for is whether there is difficulty in pulling up the square. If there is, then the force is not high enough. Once the square is removed, then go ahead and remove the triangle. What you should see is a solid, even scoring of the triangle on the backing, or what is called the liner. If the score line is not solid, and perhaps has a couple gaps, then the force needs to be increased, or the speed needs to be reduced. Finally, take your hand and place it underneath the liner to the location of the test cut. Apply a little pressure, and if it pops through easily, then the force is too high. As mentioned, the right arrow key will cut three patterns. The middle pattern is cut at the current force. The pattern to the left is cut with the current force minus one. And the pattern to the right is cut at the current force plus one. For example, if the force is set to 20, the middle pattern will be cut at force level of 20. The pattern to the left will be cut at the force level of 19, and the pattern to the right will be cut at the force level of 21. These two patterns, both the single copy and the three copies, are an easy way of testing material. What we suggest is that if you're new to the CE6000, use the second test with the three patterns until you become more familiar with the cutting characteristics of the CE6000. Before we can change the other condition settings to match our cutting materials, we have to know how to switch between conditions. The first way is probably the simplest. When the plotter is in ready mode, hold down the enter key and this little window will automatically pop up. Here's where we can quickly select a different cutting condition on the fly. Let's select condition 2 by pressing the 2 key. Once again, to change that condition, click on the condition test key. Now we can change that condition setting to a secondary material you may be using. Let's go ahead and change the next condition. At this point we could exit out of here and return to the main menu and change to another condition. Notice that within this menu though, we can simply press the one key and switch to a different condition without exiting the condition menu altogether. This will open the condition number selection screen. Then to switch to yet another condition, we can press the up or down arrow key. This will scroll through the different conditions. In this case, we'll switch to condition 3. And now we can make the changes to that condition as well. Let's go over some of the other condition settings that can be adjusted and consider why we need to adjust them. You may recall that in the upper right hand corner are three pages of condition settings. Let's press the up arrow key so we can review the second page of settings and explain what each of the settings are used for. The first thing in this window is acceleration. Adjusting the acceleration changes the amount of speed or acceleration it takes for the tool to obtain full speed after the cutter rounds a corner. If you have an intricate design or if you are cutting thick medias, you may want to decrease the acceleration. This way it will avoid pulling up the corners. Normally default is best. Tangential emulation is a setting used for cutting thicker material. 
As the cutter comes to a corner, it will slightly lift the blade out of the material, place the blade on the material, position the blade in the next direction, and then continue cutting in that direction. In the tangential emulation menu, we are given several choices. At the top are two rows, the top row being the condition numbers 1 through 8, and the bottom row indicating whether the tangential mode is turned on or turned off for each condition. A dashed line indicates that the tangential is turned off for that condition. A 1 or 2 shows that it is enabled and which mode is used respectively. The lower half of the menu shows pressing the 1 key will set the tangential emulation to mode 1. Pressing the 2 key will set the tangential emulation to mode 2. The difference between mode 1 and mode 2 is simple. Mode 1 will overcut on each corner. This is especially needed when cutting the more supple media, such as sandblast rubber. On the other hand, mode 2 does an overcut only at the start and end points of a shape. Mode 2 can be used for medias that are not as supple or stretchy. Pressing the 3 key will turn tangential emulation off. Let's exit and go back to the main menu. The next two settings relate strictly to tangential emulation. Overcut determines how far to overcut the corners, as in the case of mode 1, or the start and end point of a shape in mode 2. There's only one more setting that we would like to cover. This is the initial downforce setting. When cutting thicker media, additional time is required for the cutter blade to penetrate the media fully, even when the necessary cutting force is applied. When this happens, it can leave an uncut section or sections. When the initial downforce is increased, it's added to the initial cutting force when the tool comes down to penetrate the material. Cutting conditions are a great way to set up ideal conditions for each type of material that you have. Once they are set up, they can be used not only from the control panel, but they can also be controlled from the software controller as well, as you'll discover in future software lessons.